Welcome back to our study together on the book, Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus. In this video, we'll talk about chapter one. Chapter one begins with Mary sitting on the floor, listening to what Jesus was teaching. We're in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 and 39. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. When we read a verse like this, typically today in our time, we kind of skim through and get to the good parts, but we don't often stop and ask questions. Well, for example, let's, let's start at the beginning. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, well, from where? Where'd they been? Why are they on their way? Like, what happened before this? Do you see what I mean? Let's keep going. He came to a village. Well, which village? Well, how, how do we know? And where? What location? How close is it to Jerusalem? Hmm. Where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Okay. Was he staying the night? Was he just there for dinner? Would people have joined them? So oftentimes in oil paintings, you only see Jesus talking with Mary and then Martha's in the background cooking food. But were they the only ones there? Who else was there? And where? Were they in the living room? Were they in the, the common shared space uh, of a typical Israelite house? Were they outside in a courtyard? Where? Do you see what I mean? Asking questions and being curious is really going to help you through this study. So I want to pick this apart, just this little section. Now, thanks to the TV show, The Chosen, we now have a new mental image of what it may have looked like for Jesus and his disciples to walk along the road and to travel from place to place as they taught. But even in this photo, you notice there is a lot of green. There's some mountains in the background. This likely, this picture likely would have been uh, trying to recreate the scene in maybe Galilee in northern Israel. But if you read the first part of Luke chapter 10, we get a completely different location. In Luke chapter 10, this contains the story, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And I have a fantastic video. It is the brutal location of the Good Samaritan uh, by my friends at Appian Media. They actually went there live on location and retell this parable while on the Jericho Road. And so when we get to the part where he goes to Mary and Martha's house, he likely would have traveled with his disciples on the Jericho Road. Continuing on in chapter one, there's another discovery that I am so excited to share with you. Uh, the authors talk about Mary being the one, Martha's sister Mary, being the one to anoint Jesus' feet with the most expensive perfume money could buy and how that aroma would have a meaning associated with it. This is one of my favorite professors, Dr. Jack Beck, and he does a fabulous job on location in Jerusalem explaining the connection between Jesus' triumphal entry and how that connects to King Solomon and what that has to do with the aroma. And Mary, sister of Martha, the one who was sitting at his feet, is the one that initiated that. In order to understand the cultural and language barriers that we face between us and Jesus and his time and place, there are three things you should know. And the first is that Jesus lived under Roman rule. This was during the Roman Empire. And in this picture uh, taken from the chosen TV show, you can see a depiction of Matthew, a Jewish tax collector, who was hated by his own people because they felt he was a traitor working for the oppressor, which was Rome. And so here we see a Roman guard protecting this Jewish tax collector. The second thing you should know is that the Jewish people actually were divided into different sects. The, the Jewish people had 
different ways of viewing the world and interpreting scripture and trying to follow God. So the groups that existed during Jesus' time include some Pharisees, and you may be familiar with Pharisees from reading other New Testament stories. Uh, spoiler alert, Pharisees are not the bad guys, but Jesus associated the most with the Pharisees, which is why we read so many stories of him debating back and forth, helping them to really understand God and his love. There was another sect called the Sadducees. Now you may have heard the old joke, that uh, Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, so they were sad, you see. Ugh. I love telling that to the kids. They crack up every time. The Sadducees were part of the wealthy elite of the time, and they actually were working in cooperation with the Romans as they managed the temple and all of uh, the sacrifices and the money changing. Remember Jesus flipping those tables. The Sadducees were promoting a corrupt temple practice. And of course, we know Jesus' reaction to that at the time. The third group are called Essenes. And you may have heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Essenes were a group of disenfranchised priests from the temple who up and left and created their own commune out in the Judean wilderness in, in the desert. Uh, so the Essenes were trying to find a more pure religion to worship God. And the fourth Jewish sect uh, are called the Zealots. Now the Zealot political party came a little bit later, but the Zealot group were so zealous for God, they wanted to be like Joshua conquering Canaan, but they wanted to conquer the Romans and remove Roman rule so that God could be their king again. So all of this is happening in the background of Jesus's life and ministry, and it definitely has an impact on his teachings, where he travels, when he travels, and who he's with. Now, the political tension between these Jewish sects and each other and the Roman oppressors gets to a near boiling point when Jesus arrives on the scene. The Jewish people are ready for the Messiah to come. They are past ready. They've been ready. And it's here in Nazareth that Jesus reveals that he's not only a rabbi, but that he is the Messiah who was promised back in the book of Isaiah. But I love how chapter one ends. Can anything good really come out of Nazareth? In the new study guide version of the book, if you go back to page 222, you'll see that there are study and discussion guide questions for individuals or groups. These are fantastic and really help you to dig deeper. So come on back and join me in the next video where we'll cover chapters two, three, and four where the authors explain why was our Messiah a Jewish rabbi and how does that impact us as Christians today? I hope you'll join me then.